Hello, we're at the Coventry City training ground to speak to the Sky Blues boss as they find themselves one game away from the blue sky of the Premier League. And now it's Harmer. Gus Harmer scores! To be able to challenge and to be in a position to be able to challenge and put things in place for, for that to happen is a privileged position and I think it's from where we've, we can just never forget where we've come from. But they've all got an opportunity now to, uh, to, to play in the biggest game at this, at this level and also elevate themselves into the Premier League. They're heading to Wembley! They are one game from the glory and the riches! Mark. Thank you very much for joining us. I mean, perfectly natural sat on two chairs next to a football pitch, but, <laughs> but we thought we'd give it some context. We're at the training ground at, at Coventry, well, Wrighton to be exact. A um, few days out from the final, let's have a little look back on the two semi-finals, which as an outsider looked to be tactically perfect from your point of view. Oh, the three, they were two difficult games, right? mm. three, in, three in a row, really. And when that, that doesn't come up, and we spoke after the game, but it doesn't come up very often. Um, and that was difficult, I think, for, for, for both, of, both of us, both teams, both sets of staff, both players. I think, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough, tough uh, few games. And obviously the, the, yeah. the weather's changed now, so it's getting warmer, <laughs> uh, which doesn't help. Mm. And that took a lot out, I think, of everybody on the Sunday. And then going into the Wednesday was, um, was different again. You try and change bits and pieces, mm. but generally you're set. And, um, and it'll probably be the same at the weekend, but the, the games against Middlesbrough were very difficult games, really, really closely uh, contested and uh, not too many chances, chances at a premium, really. They had a couple at the end of the game, mm. as you'd expect when they threw, threw everything at us. And thankfully, we, uh, we stood firm and managed to get the right result. The, the way that, in particular, watching the second leg, there, there seemed to be that way of playing that really did suit you in the sense of Middlesbrough had to come after you in that game because of playing at home, of course. Um, and the likes of, of Gus going forward and, and Victor Jokeresh, it seemed to fit exactly how you wanted to play the game. There was, there was one instance where there was a very cheap giveaway in the middle of the pitch and you were jumping up and down. <laughs> uh, I, I won't name the play because it'll get me into trouble. <laughs> but um, that sense of when you have planned something as well as that and it coming to fruition as well as that. That must be immensely rewarding. I think it is for everybody. I mean, I've got brilliant coaches as well. I mean, Adi Vimash is an outstanding coach, as every, everybody, or maybe not everybody's aware. He spent 10 years at, uh, at Chelsea and won everything he can win at those mm. levels. And um, he made that step up for me at a, a really difficult time where I lost my, my assistant manager who had a brain hemorrhage mm. here at the training ground. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't work with us again. Um, fortunately, he's okay, okay now. Yeah. But, um, you know, AD came in and he was really, I mean, he's really classy the way he's, he, he came in and, and really was sort of standoffish at first. And then when it became clear that, 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 um, that Steve Taylor couldn't get, uh, couldn't get back to work, he, uh, he filled that void and has done it brilliantly ever since. So as, a, as a, a, a sounding board, as somebody who brings ideas as well and somebody who's, who's worked at a really high elite level, mm. um, developing players, which is what we've been about, um, was really important. So, you know, the fact that I've, I've got him and I've got uh, Dennis Lawrence on the back of that and um, Aled Williams, who's done really well this season. You know, the, 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 the goalkeeping situation has changed and, and he's managed to yeah. keep them both together. Simon Moore, who's been out of the side, has done fantastically well, really, as a support. You know, he turned into a, a, a really high-level support for, for Ben, which mm -hmm. has been fantastic. And you need that when people are out of the team. They have to be able to in a way that's supportive when it's really difficult. So Testament's got to go to them as well. And I think, yeah, everything that we do is geared towards trying to develop. So it's set up that way. It's been that way for six years. People know how I want things done. It's, it's generally fairly easy for me now, you know, it's, it's, genuinely. It's, um, yeah. The Delegation is that then for you? When it comes to putting yeah. people in the right place that you can trust. Yeah, and I think that's been difficult as well, and that's been a journey for me. So right at the start, you do everything, you know, really try and take everything on. And I was a lot younger then as well. I'm 53 <laughs> now, so you know, probably look a bit older than that. But I think you not know, at all. Not <laughs> at all. you've got to, you've got to, yeah, learning. I mm. think is the is the main thing, and learning to to trust other people, and and I've got that in a, in abundance really. You mentioned that that period of time being here. We'll go on to that in just a second. But does that reflect the season as a whole then? Because a convoluted start to the season, of course. Mm. Um, bottom of the table in October. In, in other situations, in the Championship, we know what it's like, how many managers have, have yeah. come and gone. Um, 
the fact that you've managed to work your way through that as a manager, but also with your team around you and get to where you are now, that is that something, have you learned new things this season because of that or is it the very nature of football? I think that's just the nature of, of this club and the nature of the work that I've done throughout my managerial career. And, and all the jobs are different. They all have different elements that, um, that challenge you. Mm. Um, but thankfully we've been able to, and, I, and I've had the time, and you rightly say, there's mm. managers lost the job at this level and bottom of the league in October is generally a no-no. Yeah. But I've had patience from, um, from, from the previous board, from Joy Seppler, who, who brought me back for a second time and was really supportive in that sense. And, um, and then obviously we've had the takeover in the middle, which yeah. can be a bit of an upheaval. But in fairness to Doug, Doug's come in and he's been, he's been brilliant. He's been fairly smooth. He spoke, we spoke in uh, at great length about what we wanted to do and try and achieve. And, and really we were talking about in the next five years, trying to challenge at the top end of the division to, um, uh, to get into the playoffs. Head of schedule then. We're slightly <laughs> ahead, we're slightly ahead. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's what comes next. And obviously the, 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 the biggest game Really, as we talk about in the championship, the most, or the the, the money with the most wealth, mm. the uh, best in football, the, it's the biggest one 100, in the world. percent. Mm. So, you know, the, 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 there's that at the back of your mind as well. But ultimately, you've got to perform and uh, and, and go out and try and treat things as normal as you possibly can do, which is you know something we don't do this for two a, hours on a, before day, on a daily basis. <laughs> no, so, so that's slightly different. Any any reticence about coming back for a second time? Any any doubt in your mind with that? <clears throat> Uh, and initially, I think really I could have I maybe come back a little bit earlier, but there was a bit of doubt, and, and that was that was back in the December, prior to the March, and I came back in the March. But um, I, there was a little bit, but ultimately it was a case of uh, looking from the outside and know where the trajectory was, and mm. it wasn't it wasn't pleasant watching, I think. And and when they gave me the opportunity to come back, I, I really didn't hesitate that time, and and, it, and I came back in March. 2017 and it's been you know I walked through the door here and it was different totally different than mm. than in 2012 or 2013 when I left and uh, it was uh, yeah it definitely needed did dragging up and um, and putting back into place because there, there was really nothing there was no real plan for the next season yeah. or for what came next so that was a big thing but in, in fairness that's that's a good thing for managers I think generally they get a blank canvas and, and you can start again but You've got a fan base that you've got, and there's, there's a certain level of expectation mm. here as well. So, you've played it. You know, you've got a you've got an understanding of what it's like. The support has been magnet, really important, but magnificent. Well, that that was the because having that little insight into being part of what Coventry City is, and if you're a Coventry fan watching this, I apologise profusely. But um, so, I remember training here, but our home games were at <laughs> Sixfields, so at Northampton. Yeah, and then it moves off the back of that there's there's relegations there's promotions when you are you talk about taking over at Rotherham as well when you're doing your coaching badges is there a section on managing <laughs> fo football clubs that might be of a certain kind of background or is it literally as you say you've got to do it on the job on the spot and work your way through it together and with that fan base it must help I think you can they don't or they didn't certainly when I was doing mm. my qualifications and I, and I still do my uh, revalidation uh, the pro license, but you, you, there certainly wasn't any elements there that, that helped you sort of manage your adversity. But I think they've started to put things in, mm. but it still doesn't prepare you for the reality and what happens on the ground. There are so many elements to it, so many facets to it, and that's been the, um, you know, that's been the thing. And I, I always say that the key thing for me was trying to bring that cohesion back and the, and the relationship between the players, the club, yeah. and most importantly, the, 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 the supporters with the players. Um, and that's happened and that's been fantastic. That's, that goes with the work that we do in the community with the players mm. and getting amongst them. Also going to see them at the, uh, at the various supporters clubs and on numerous occasions. But you know, the fact that the supporters have loved it, they've bought into it right from minute one. Mm. And that was what I'd asked for, that's what I've got. And, and that's why the club is so, so special and dear to me and a lot of other people. You mentioned how long you've been here. It's, it's quite an achievement given what the modern day managers kind of tenure seems to be fifth longest serving manager in, in English football does that does being here with this Coventry City side does that begin with that wonderful young vibrant side you got out of League Two was that the foundation the the first building block if you like to move forward I think I think the key thing coming back was trying to get a um, a, a leader in the dressing room and Michael Doyle coming mm. back was was paramount and thankfully he, and at 34 I think he was at the time and he came back and he just lifted the trophy. I went to Mansfield actually and watched them. Um, 
proper pro, mm. proper, at the, you know, at the, at, the, um, at this football club he's experienced that and, and higher. And he'd experienced promotion recently, obviously with Portsmouth, he took them up champions mm. and, and he came in and he led the dressing room for a couple of years and he was abs absolutely outstanding. But I always say everybody that played the part in the journey, everybody's played the part that's been here. Um, so, yeah, credit goes to them. It, it was, it was, it was really important. Michael Doyle coming back. We, we had uh, Liam Kelly, who's still here, mm. and he's the that's only one that's left. Story, isn't it? Incredible. He gets to step through the Premier League door with Coventry. Incredible, because he's and obviously he's been out of the team for a while. He's, he's had uh, well documented injuries, and mm. but he's come back. He's looked after himself, and he's got himself in a position where, when called upon, he's been able to do a to do a job for us. And more than that, he's been he's been outstanding and led on the pitch for me. So. Um, I think that the, the, the story is incredible. You look at Luton's story as well, and it's... So many you know, similarities, yeah, aren't they? Absolutely, and they came from a step below, so... Um, you know, they'll feel, and, and it's one of those things, I think both clubs feel that it may, it may be destiny, and, mm -hmm. you know, but you don't know, you've got to go out on the day and, and perform and, and try and make it your destiny. What's your thoughts on Luton, then, what you've seen from them this season? What threats do they pose? They, they pose an awful lot of threats. Obviously, they finished third. They finished ten points in front of us, so they'll be they'll be the favourites going into this game, I'm sure. But um, you know, it's on the day. It's who handles the day. Uh, the best. They, they they've got a lot of threats. Obviously, mm. the two strikers are, are, are very very good, and that's where I look. I was a striker, and um, you look at their threats. Carlton Morris has done unbelievable things. They've got Collie Woodrow, obviously, to, to call upon if needed. I know he's had an injury of late, but. Uh, um, really good striker, and um, and Daddy Bayo, Elijah Adebayo up front as well, who's mm. who's by just his very physical presence is a is a real threat and a handful. So players behind it, they've got loads and loads of energy. You know they'll get about you and and try and put you under a lot of pressure. It's going to be interesting with VAR being there for the what's first you, time this season. It's interesting because we've not had it for the for the 46 games and the two playoff games so far. But for it to come in, and, and obviously both clubs will have had. Uh, meeting with mm. the the the, uh, the officials just to talk us through that. Have you so, have you had a sit down and a, and a chat yeah, about that? Yeah. yeah, we've done that. Is it something look. that you've watched in the Premier League and thought that could have done us a favour, or is it something that you've watched in the Premier League and thought, thank God, that's not what we've got? I think, I, well, I think it's depend, it depends if you've got the dark arts to, <laughs> off to a T and and whether they see it or not. I think that, that you've got a you've got a situation where it is different, mm. you know, but you've got to play the game and. Um, that won't change. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've spoken in depth about about that, and uh, they had a good meeting the other day. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed on that front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll speak to you after the game and see if there's a key decision that's been decided that way. Um, you mentioned Wembley. Your track record with Coventry at Wembley is pretty good, isn't it? So you're going there as a manager that understands the dynamics of winning there. Um, is that something that you need to feed back to the players? Will you be going there before the game itself? Will you in the vicinity just to get your heads around as a collective what that day might be like? Um, yeah, we've got certain things planned mm. and, and what are you, but again, you, you, you don't walk out to that cauldron of noise before you um, before you walk out to that cauldron of noise. <laughs> you don't you don't sort of uh, you, you can't think about that and there was one point where Middlesbrough scored in the in the semi-final in the mm. second leg up at the Riverside late on in the game and that noise I nearly deafened me it was yeah. it was incredible so if you times that by two I think yeah. that's you're getting close to the, the, the noise we've spoken about that as well obviously you don't hear anything you can't hear anything no. so the, 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 pl the preparation's got to be spot on anyway but they play together so often that um, that it, it should be it should be second nature to them I think really it's it's handling the uh, the occasion and we always speak about it, play the game, not the occasion. Mm. Difficult to do that from time to time, but you know, you've know, you got confidence in the players. They've got confidence in their players. It's going to be a really interesting game. And you've got players that you feel will really grow in that situation, <laughs> the likes of uh, Gus Harmer and, and, and Victor Jokeraj. I think we're all, as, as football fans and, and followers of the league <laughs> and, and the team, really looking forward to see what those big wide open spaces can do for someone like him, who's had another fantastic season. He's been, uh, he's been phenomenal. Not just this season, but since he's walked through the door, um, he had a he had an issue when when he first came because he hadn't played. He was at Swansea. We took him second half of the season, and he hadn't played. And I think he was expecting to play. I think he'd been told he was going to play the first ten games when he walked through the door, and there was never any way that that was going to be able to happen no. because he hadn't played. So he had to trust me, and um, and he has, you know, he's trusted me implicitly. He trusted me with his career. The second time when I said, right, you're ready, mm. come back. And as soon as he came back through the door, he's been phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it, we looked like we'd signed a, a totally different player who'd got loads of confidence from the move, and and he hasn't really looked back. So, 
you know, there's still a lot of learning in him. You know, he's not the finished article. Mm -hmm. um, but he's been he's been absolutely outstanding. But he's been supported by some really good players yeah. too. And it's not just the, those kind of stellar names, and I mean this with the the, the greatest respect to someone like Karl McFadden, but his reaction after the semi-final at the city was so buzzing to be in the final. Yeah. The career that he's had, and we, we, we'd have come across so many players such as this, he, he, the ones that are there day in, day out, week in, week out, dogged, good professionals, mm. massive members of the dressing room, that have got an opportunity now to play in a game such as this and mm. see where the last few years of his career might be. It, it could be a wonderful kind of fairy tale end. You must have so much kind of respect and affection for players such as that. It's incredible because I mean he was at Sheffield United and he, and he quit the game for three years. Yeah. You know things didn't go right for him and he quit the game. He ended up coming back with Nicky Law uh, at Alfreton Town, I think, and um, and that got him back into it and he was cajoled back into the game mm. by Nicky, I think. So you know he ended up down at Crawley, um, had some success at Crawley with Steve Evans and uh, it was at MK Dons, but at Burton Albion with Nigel is where. You know, he started to mm. he started to take off. He had some a taste of a couple of years in the championship with Burn, which was a, a brilliant story in itself. Um, and we took him from there at the end of his contract, and he's been fantastic for us ever since. So, yeah, you rightly say that there's there's a lot of players here. Matty Gordon's another one mm. that's come come from a different route, um, but they've all got an opportunity now to, uh, to to play in the biggest game at this at this level, and also elevate themselves into the Premier League. It reflects as well, doesn't it, that kind of journey with the fans as well. They've been away from the, the top tier for over 20 years now yeah. and the, what they've had to kind of work with and deal with has been reflected in a lot of the players' journeys to here as well. And as you say, as a manager, it's not been straightforward. It's been interesting, to say the least. It's been interesting for everybody. <laughs> I think even the supporters. And um, that's where they can really appreciate the, 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 the work that's being done, you know, the football that we try and play. Mm. We try and entertain them as much as we possibly can do. We play some brilliant football. I mean, scintillating at times. Last season was incredible, you know, and that was the start of things where we started to believe that we were at the level at this level. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just been carried on this year. But we've got some young players here who've made a big difference and they're improving all the time too. We've been trusted by top clubs, Manchester City, Chelsea, and, uh, and others, and 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 Notts Forest, and and we've got uh, we've got some really good young talent on the uh, on the pitch as well, and and on the and on, in the stands or on the bench, ready to come in when called upon. And yeah. they've been they've been really good. They've been really together. And um, you know, hopefully that'll that'll be the case into the weekend. You talk about the football that you play. Is that a set kind of ethos that you have? Is a, a set philosophy? That's a key word. That yeah. Just that you Have you always had that? So you, you start managing in two thousand and seven. You're sixteen years into it now. Is is it, has that evolved, developed, changed in any way? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, you you. I first go into a job and you've got to stay in the job because if you don't do well in your first job that's you done yeah so, that drop-up rate after a, yeah. a, a first sacking is is it's huge off cliff, isn't it? it's Manage, huge yeah. yeah so you have to have some some tangible success and, mm. and and with rotherham it was it was different because of the circumstances around it but the way that we kept that on track because when you get to that point it's teetering on the brink and um again there was a change of ownership during that period of time you know, things could have been different. Mm. Tony Stewart's still there now and he's built the club up from where it was at that point and done a fantastic job along the way. He's had some really good managers there to help him along the way and um, and they've done well and you keep an eye on those those results as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that certainly stands you in good stead for what comes. And, and um, I, I remember really distinctly a, a podcast, I think with Clem, mm -hmm. um, years ago, right at the start, and um, Graham Taylor was on it and he was yeah. listening to what was going on and he said, look, he said, this will stand you in good stead. You won't feel it now, he says, but it'll stand you in good stead for the rest of your career. And he, he, was, he was absolutely spot on. Um, and to get that advice from somebody of that stature was, mm. was incredible. So, um, yeah, I've been lucky. I've been, I've been given some really strong and good advice from, from good people over the years. You mentioned Graham Taylor. I mean, there's potential to be in that group of managers that's gone from <laughs> the bottom tier all the way to the top. It could be the sixth manager. Graham's one of those, Dave Bassett's another. Um, I do get the sense though, when I tell you stuff like that, that, that you, you you quite like to swat <laughs> that away and just <laughs> concentrate on what's in front of you. It, it, what, what, what's, what's more pleasing for you? What's more potentially rewarding? Try and put yourself 10 years ahead. It, it, is it longevity as a manager off the back of a, a very good playing career? Or is it the medals that you've got, the achievements that you've got? Is it being able to say, I managed in professional football for 25, 30 years? No, not at all. No, I think really I came into it without a plan of doing that. Mm. I just fell into it. 
Uh, unfortunately, Alan Nil lost his job yeah. and I was given the caretaker role and then given the job on the back of that. And that's sometimes what happens. Nobody knows whether you can do it until you sit in the seat. Mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't know and I wasn't sort of preparing for that. So it was thrust upon me at, at, at that point. Um, but then you sort of grow into it. Mm. And, um, and again, you need support. You can't do it on your own. As I mentioned at the start of the interview, we try and do everything on your own at the start, or mm. I did. Um, but I still had really good people around me, but it's recognizing that and, and growing into the, into the role. So, um, no, the most important thing for, for me is to make sure that, that the club that you're managing, in this, this case, obviously Coventry City, which is, which is a club that I think really a lot of, I mean, really, I love the club. I think it's brilliant. I think the support and everything around it's been fantastic to me. Mm. And in turn, we've given them some really good times. And this is another one on Saturday. But, but, the development of players and, and um, you know, making sure that they get the best opportunity as much as you possibly can. The most mm. difficult thing is obviously when players aren't playing as much as you'd like to give them or, or they're not quite at the level and they're trying to get them to that level. And, but the majority of it is about the players and seeing them flourish and, that, and that's been something that's been, I think both AD and I are in the same, in the same mm. camp on that. Um, and to see players develop either to stay with us or to move on to something, something different or something bigger. Um, is great. What you want to try and do, of course, is, is keep everybody together and, and yeah. develop and try and grow uh, in the building. Is that the most pleasing part of the job, watching that player development, <laughs> lads that you've brought on and, and, and flourish and blossom? I think so, yeah. I mean, obviously, winning is a really important part of it. <laughs> um, but that's a, that's a... I mean, they've got some nice cars as well. They're flying past there, aren't they? Yeah. These are late for training. Well, no, uh, right. we, we, we were looking at that as well the other day. You look out into the car park now and it's different. So when we first came, there was Fiestas in, and there's nothing wrong with these, by the way. It's changed. Um, and that's a change. But what hasn't changed is there's the humility with the, within the group. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good thing. New contracts, things to be seemingly on an even keel. I know that you're a manager that likes to manage upwards, sideways, downwards, everywhere in a football club. Um, if, if you can, if, if this isn't a totally moot question to ask of, regardless of the result on Saturday, um, Coventry City are in a very, very good place, aren't they? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think that, um, and that, and that's a good point. You know, regardless of what happens on Saturday, it's been an incredible achievement. And it is an achievement getting to this final because um, there's so many good teams, so many good players in the, in the division and there's no divine right, there's no saying that you're going to get there mm. for, for a long time again. But to, to be able to challenge and to be in a position to be able to challenge and put things in place for, for that to happen is a privileged position and I think it's from where we've, you, you just never forget where we've come from uh, in the last six years. And um, yeah, if we can do that and have solid foundations then, then we, can, we can achieve quite a lot. You mentioned the key thing, just to finish up, the fans and how big they've been mm. for the time that you've been in charge, obviously for the decades before, yeah. Coventry City were always a mainstay of the top division of English football. It was always a raucous bunch of people. They'll be there in great number and great voice at Wembley. Have you got anything to say to them other than be noisy, be as much as you possibly can? Thank you, because without them, it's very, very difficult to make it happen. They have been 100%, I would say 99.9%. Um, 100% behind the players, 100% behind the players. And when things haven't gone well, generally, they've got behind them and that's the key thing. Mm. You know, if they can stay behind the players, the human beings, and they have done, and they've seen that, and they've seen the outcomes of, um, of doing that. Um, and I think it was only the, the, this year's game when we played in the FA Cup and I changed the team against Wrexham, which I needed to change the team in that, in that game, which mm. wasn't great. Um, when we lost 4-2 and heavily, that day I was let known, you know, was that the best team you can pick? <laughs> the well, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so we, we know that and, and hopefully this, this means that we can, we can have a, a, a stronger uh, squad, a stronger depth, whichever, whichever division we're, we're, we're playing in. Obviously it's going to be different and it's going to take some thinking about should it go really well on Saturday. Um, but it's, it's a brilliant position to be in. Mark, pleasure. We wish you all the best, mate. Thank you. Tom, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much.